questions about um, latent locks and linear interpolation. Uh, because, like, how exactly do we get this sort of, like, trippy effect with um, latent lock videos? So it's not actually a linear interpolation between frames, because we could imagine, um, you know, if, uh, let's see. So if it was, like, a pixel-by-pixel pixel linear interpolation, basically what we would get is um, something like... we would get something like this in between, right? Where you would just have like an overlay of one image over the other as you were linearly interpolating between them. Um, but what the machine learning algorithm is doing is um, a linear interpolation between all of the probability distributions for each of the generated images. Um, so what exactly does this mean? Well, it's kind of weird to think about because uh, as human beings, like we don't, um, exist in high dimensional space. <laughs> um, you know, we, we just think about things in terms of like 3D, maybe 4D if you, you know, are thinking about time as a vector. Um, but each of these output images has a whole bunch of probability distributions associated with it. Uh, so you could think about, maybe for simplicity's sake, it's a little more complicated than this, but let's just say that this is our, um, trees probability distribution and we have a water probability distribution um, but you know they, they wouldn't actually be um, they wouldn't actually be like these characteristics um, but just for simplicity's sake uh, we'll say that this is the the blue green probability distribution and this is the um, rough smooth probability distribution um, so each of these things are kind of existing on different vectors and as the generative adversarial network is training it's getting better at um, you know honing these probability distributions such that they match uh, the training data so we could imagine that our tree probability distribution um, you know let's say that most of the training data doesn't have trees in it um, but some of it does. And so we'll put this here. But if it has trees, it has a lot of trees. So for example, in the training data, it's like it's either a dense forest or it's um, you know a landscape like mountains or something like that. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of like just a single tree hanging out on a hill. Um, so this is no trees. Um, and then, actually, it would look a little bit more like this. Let's see. Um, so it's either got a lot of trees or it's got no trees. It doesn't really have much in between. Um, so let's say that that's what our probability distribution looks like. Please excuse my, um, my weird shapes. <laughs> I've never made a video like this before. Um, cool. So then if we're thinking about where each of these um, images lies on that probability distribution, this first image, um, we'll make that our green image, uh, falls right at the top of this probability distribution. Um, these other images fall, you know, this one has some trees, but it's mostly a no trees, I would say. Um, we'll call this one our, our blue point and um, let's see, this one has even fewer trees. Uh, I'm going to put it over here. Um, and that one will be our orange point. Uh, so we can imagine that, you know, each of these has some number. Um, and, you know, if, if we call this our tree vector, then there's going to be some uh, some float value associated with it. Uh, so when we actually look at like the table, um, we'll call this T, uh, and let's just say that these three images are going to exist in our vector. So, um, you know, if this is zero, I'm going to call this 
um, 0 0.1 for the first one. Uh, this blue one, let's call that 0 0.8, and let's call this orange one 0 0.9. Uh, I'm actually going to call this no trees because we kind of did it backwards here. So this is our NT probability distribution. Um, then we're going to look at water, right? So that one here, um, we'll call this one no water over here. And this one, we'll call it ocean if it's just all water. Um, so because all of this training data was mostly landscapes, I would say that most things are going to show up here um, with no water, but then there's a subset that kind of has like lakes and stuff. And then um, there aren't a whole lot that are really ocean. So let's say that that's what the probability distribution looks like for those. Uh, so same thing, we're going to say, all right, our trees, um, that's definitely no water. And then this one is kind of unusual, actually. So this one has like a lot of water in it, um, more than average. And then this one um, also has no water, so we'll put it, you know, next to this trees one. Uh, so then we're going to come up with our vector values here for water. Um, so let's say our trees here, that'll be at like point 0.1. Uh, then the second vector is going to be this blue one, so that one is going to be at um, point eight, we'll say, and then this orange one is going to be at 0.15. Uh, so as a reminder, these vectors are not going in order from left to right, they're going in order of these images. Um, so this is our green one, this is our blue one, and this is our red one or orange one, uh, and same for these ones, our green, our blue, and our orange. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of these probability distributions. We can keep going in a second. Um, but so let's just take these two probability distributions and think about them in 2D space. So what happens if we make this water vector our y-axis and this tree vector our x-axis? I wonder if I can just flip this like this. Perfect. Um, okay. So then if we want to like draw out where each of these things goes, um, if we're looking at, you know, a pairwise comparison of the two, make this a little bit lighter. Um, so this is where our green one goes. Um, this here is where our orange one goes. And this here is where our blue picture goes. Oops. Lost one of my one of my right angles here. There we go. Um, so this is 
just a two-dimensional visualization of our water vector versus our tree vector. Um, and then when we look at these like humps here, we can see that you know there's a big hump here and there's a big hump here. We can imagine um, that there's a lot of like weight um, at this place. Uh, so you can sort of think of it almost like a bullseye, right? Um, of like, we would expect to see a lot of images in this area uh, because we would expect to see a lot of no trees and a lot of no water because that's mostly what our training data was trained on. Um, we would expect to see some things here, but maybe not as much as we would at this other vector. Um, or at this other pair of vectors. So we might see some things here, but actually no trees is more common than trees. Uh, and then, let's see, so there's another probability distribution spike right here and right here. So we would actually maybe expect to see more things here as well. And so it kind of makes sense that this blue one is sort of on the edge there. Um, but, you know, having that much ocean is maybe not as common as, as we would really expect, um, probabilistically. Uh, so this is just a, an oversimplification. You would actually kind of expect there to be some overlap here, maybe. Um, but this is just kind of a general idea of thinking about um, thinking about these vectors and actually these circles would probably be a little bit higher because the very very peak of this probability distribution is more like this um, but then these dots are where our actual images fall in that um, you know combination of vectors okay so that's sort of what we're thinking about uh, in terms of those images so then um, just thinking, you know, still in two-dimensional space, if we want to think about a linear interpolation between our tree picture and our ocean picture, um, let's make this red, and let's add, um, let's add an arrow to it. Um, so if, if we're, ooh, that's a lot of arrow. Um, so if we're thinking about a linear interpolation between these images, um, we're going to be moving through this vector space along here. And so at every point along this line is going to be another frame in the latent walk video. Um, so to kind of think about what the image would look like at any point, we can sort of draw this line up and draw this line down, and we can say, okay, um, let me draw this, this purple one here. Um, so this is our new frame, and we can think about this new frame existing here and here on these probability distributions. Um, so we'll bring it back over to here. It's going to be about here, and it's going to be about there. Does that seem right? Yeah. So then if we're imagining um, our image that's going to occur in between these two images. Um, what we know about it is that it's going to have um, some water. Um, we said that this this uh, peak right here was kind of like our, our lakes local maxima. Um, so maybe this image has a lake in it and maybe this image has not a whole lot of trees. Um, 
And maybe this local maxima over here is going to be like force from a distance. And this local maxima here is going to be like in deep forest. Um, so we can imagine, and, and it kind of makes sense, right? If we think about like what that latent walk is going to look like, we can imagine going from like a forest to maybe a lake forms in the center here as we're making our linear interpolation. Um, Oh, sorry, it would be the other direction. So we could imagine that um, maybe this ocean then turns into a lake and maybe these trees grow because it starts to get more trees as it moves across. And so that's why the linear interpolations aren't just like a pixel by pixel interpolation, but they're actually um, you know, assigning values here. But obviously this is like a big oversimplification, right? Because not all of the probability distributions are tied to like human understood concepts like water and trees. Maybe they are, um, but they could also be tied to other characteristics um, that, you know, the, the algorithm has kind of picked out over time. Um, so then we could imagine the same thing with like this blue-green probability distribution. So we're going... Um, here, this is, um, or you know what? Let's make it, um, let's make it green, orange, uh, and so then we can picture the same thing, right? Where we're saying, um, Actually, you know, there's a ton of green. Um, there's a lot of blue also. Um, then there's like pretty much no like red or purple. Um, but then because of like sunsets and stuff, we sort of like make our way back up into orange. And even over at this end, um, maybe... Yeah, we'll say that there's a lot of orange, um, and maybe there's some yellow too because um, because of sunshine. Um, but maybe those sunsets aren't as common, um, and probability distributions don't really look like this. But this is just an <laughs> approximation. Um, okay, so for this green orange vector. Um, our trees are firmly placed here. Um, our mountain is over here. Our ocean is over here. Um, you know, we could imagine that this just goes kind of like a rainbow. So then this is blue, and then this is purple. Over here is red. And so that's our geo vector. Um, and this one, yeah, we'll say that's 0.05. We'll say that this one is 0.2. Um, and then this one is 0.95. Okay. Um, so it gets a little complicated, though, because now we've got this third vector, um, and you could imagine that this third vector might be kind of happening in 3D space here. Um, and at this point, it gets kind of hard to render because I'm just using Adobe Illustrator <laughs> right now. Um, but you can imagine that, like, you know, these four points um, or these three points um, all still exist in this 3D space. It's just that um, maybe I'll take these off of here for a second for simpl simplicity's sake. Um, 
So now what we want to do is we want to say that like this orange vector kind of exists here. Um, actually, it would be further out because of this one here. Um, oops. Actually, so here's what we want to do really is we want to bring it down to that point that it belongs to on that line and then this goes down to here yeah that makes more sense um, so just to try and make this make a little bit of sense um, so basically what I've done is I've like dragged this orange point down to that actual vector line and I've dragged this point down to here um, maybe what makes the most sense is just to drag them down like this okay so there's that there's that I take this off for a second there's that we'll get rid of these probability distributions for simplicity's sake um, so this is here, this is here, this one is here, this is our GO vector, that green-orange one, um, I'm just kind of cleaning up the chart here. So this is GO, this is our W vector from here. This is our NT vector here. I'm going to take the purple out for now. There we go. And we'll get rid of this probability distribution too. Okay, so now we can sort of think about this in 3D space. Um, now that I see it a little bit clearer, I think that maybe this should be a little bit higher. Maybe like that. Maybe. No, I still think it should be higher. Okay. So that's where our orange exists in 3D space. Oops. Um... And then where does our green exist in 3D space? Um, it's going to go out like this. It's going to be way out here. And then it's going to be there. Um, so I think maybe here. Right? There we go. And then we need another one. Okay. So that's where our green dot goes. Um, I'm gonna make these outlined just so we don't get confused. just lower their opacity. 
So that's where they exist there, and then where do they actually physically exist in 3D space? Um, so this one's going to be much higher, and it's going to be out here. So maybe let's just say that it goes here. So that's where our blue dot is in 3D space. I have no idea if this is actually what it would look like in 3D space because I'm, I'm not very good at thinking in 3D. Um, <laughs> but we can imagine, you know, that these these are all existing in some like three dimensional area. Um, so then, if we still want to do a linear interpolation, um, say we're going from the green to the blue again. this red and we'll give it an arrow um, so now when we're going through this space and we want to figure out um, what our frame is we're actually going to be we're going to be getting three different values we're going to be getting our GO vector um, value, our NT vector value, and our W vector value. Um, and we would imagine that from green to blue, that um, that GO vector value is going to be somewhere in here. Um, so we can also think about these um, as linear interpolations that are happening like along here, along each of these probability distributions. So it's happening there, it's happening here, and it's happening here. But the thing about it is that that purple frame is never going to be up here, it's going to be somewhere along here. Um, so it's moving um, along here, and so, um, so you can kind of picture that, oh, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this, <laughs> um, so you can kind of picture that, like, even though it's a linear interpolation, it's going to move faster or slower, depending on where it is on this probability distribution, like, it's more likely to end up at the top of one of these peaks than it is to end up at the bottom of one of these peaks. Um, because it's just going through more spaces along, along here. Um, so it's not moving in a straight line. And so um, we can imagine that, you know, like I said before, these are, um, these are semantic. Uh, and so in actuality, the, the vectors that the machine learning algorithm is using aren't going to be semantic like that. Um, but it's going to be moving um, and changing across the probability distributions for tons and tons and tons of these vectors. Um, so forget how complicated three-dimensional space is. You can imagine that um, it's moving in a higher dimensional space than even 3D, um, which is why it's kind of tricky to wrap your head around. Um, but that's what gets us these really um, beautiful interpolations between frames. Uh, and that's why it's not similar to um, these two images just um, blending over each other that you'll actually get um, you know a really smooth um, image that looks like it could have come from the generative adversarial network that looks as though it still matches the training data uh, so I, I hope that this is helpful um, this is just kind of how I think through things I'm um, not a um, classically trained computer scientist. I'm an artist, but this is, um, as far as I know, a little bit more background about why linear interpolations look the way that they do. So thanks for tuning in.